You're watching Big Island Television, Hawaii's Aloha Channel. Hawaii at its best is now at the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, home of Madame Pele, the Hawaiian volcano goddess. Hawaiian chants and oral traditions tell of the many eruptions she created. Kilauea is among the most active volcano in the world and is the most intensely observed and best understood volcano on our planet. It is a shield volcano built against the southeastern slope of Mauna Loa. Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater lies within the main caldera. This crater is the principal site of activity at Kilauea's summit. Thomas Jagger was a geologist at MIT. He recognized that to fully understand volcanoes, one must study them continuously before, during, and after eruptions. In 1912, he established the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory to study volcanic activity on a permanent scientific basis. The park was formally recognized by Congress in 1916. Here's a look at how visitors back then spent a day in the park. This seems to be the original Chain of Craters Road. By the looks of it, visitors had complete freedom to roam as they wished, and even hit a few golf balls into the crater. Ever seen an eruption start from the ground up? In 1955, Kilauea volcano erupted on the Lower East Rift Zone for the first time since 1840. The eruption lasted for 88 days, opened 24 vents 9 miles long, multiple fountains reaching 2,000 feet high, 21 homes destroyed, 4,000 acres covered by lava. But maybe best of all, viewing was safe. Many visitors flocked to the area to get a front row seat, including those staying at the Volcano House Hotel. Dinner and cocktails overlooking an active volcano. In 1960, 29 miles down from Kilauea, ground fractures appeared in the town of Kapoho, followed by numerous earthquakes, clear signs of an impending eruption. January 14, 1960, in back of the local mom-and-pop stores, the earth opened with a tremendous eruption. Fountains were in close proximity to the town. Violent steam emissions spewed a tephra, which are pyroclastic materials ejected from a volcano. Bulldozers built barricades hoping to divert the flow. They were unsuccessful. Local farmers evacuated after packing up their crops. Lava spilled into the ocean two miles away, and by January 28th, most of Kapoho had been destroyed. A few years later, in 1969, we saw the Mauna Ulu eruption that lasted 1,774 days. The current eruption activity here in the island began at Pu'u'o'o Kupayanaha, January 3rd, 1983. Centered on Kilauea's East Rift Zone, over its first three years, 44 lava fountains built a cinder cone later named Pu'u'o'o. East of Kilauea was Royal Garden Subdivision. In 1983, about 200 structures were built here, but in the years to come, all properties were taken by lava flows. A year later, March 1984, Hilo witnessed the eruption of Mauna Loa Mountain. The flow advanced northeast towards the outskirts of Hilo Town and ended 22 days later. Next for Madame Pele was March 1990 when lava entered the Kalapana community and its famed Kalapana Black Sand Beach. Threatened were the beach, the town, its park and shops, and the Star of the Sea painted church built in 1927. So important was this church for the local townspeople that they hoisted the entire building onto a truck to save it from the incoming flow. By the end of the year, the Kalapanda Black Sand Beach and the entire community, including 100 homes, were buried under 80 feet of lava. The church was saved in a new location. Also gone was the Queen's Bath, a freshwater pond once enjoyed by Hawaiian royalty and was a favorite swimming hole for local residents. October 2014, lava from Pu'u'o'o flows 14 miles into the town of Pahoa, stopping just short of the Pahoa Transfer Station. It's now the year 2018. 
Madame Paley unleashes her fury in the quiet community of Leilani Estates, located in the Puna District, 25 miles south of Hilo Town, population about 2,000. The subdivision was formed in 1964. Here, community pride runs deep and strong. For many, this was the perfect location to raise a family and build a future. Wednesday, April 25th, Hali Ma'u Ma'u Lava Lake produces 90 acres of new lava. Tuesday, May 1st, a 4.0 magnitude earthquake recorded offshore from Pu'u'o'o. Wednesday, May 2nd, at Hali Ma'u Ma'u, lava sat in this lake until, without notice, the floor collapsed, which allowed magma to escape and flow rapidly downstream to Puna, which includes Leilani Estates. Here is the East Rift Zone. Leilani Estates is located about 25 miles downwind from Kilauea Volcano. Rift zones are areas where the volcano is rifting or splitting apart. These large cracks opens the way for magma to reach the surface. Thursday, May 3rd, surface cracks appear in the subdivision roads. A steam and sulfur fumes escapes from deep down. And then at 5 p.m., an eruption commences in Leilani Estates. The first fountain reached 150 feet high, 200 yards wide. Friday, May 4th at 12.30 p.m., the island was rattled by a 6.9 magnitude earthquake centered 10 miles southwest of Leilani Estates. It was Hawaii's biggest earthquake since 1975. Eruption activity continues in Leilani subdivision as this once a tranquil family residential community where 2,000 residents have built their lives is now being overtaken by lava. Monday, May 7th, Fisher 10 opens. So far, 35 structures are destroyed. Here we see a car being swallowed up by the lava. Through the month of May, numerous fissures open onto Leilani Estates. This fissure type of activity was extensive and commonplace. A single fountain type eruption would come weeks later. Of the 28 fissures that opened, all eventually subsided, except for fissure number eight. Farther back from the coastline, this is the path it would take down to the ocean. All the lava you see here is now coming from this one single fountain. Fissure eight forms a large channeled flow down slope towards the Pacific. In between the fountain and the ocean is Kapoho Beach Lots and nearby vacation land. As it was mentioned earlier, the town of Kapoho was destroyed in 1960. Years later, a newly developed Kapoho town emerged on the water's edge. Beautiful and modern, this private gated community sits on the eastern tip of the Big Island. These gorgeous homes were either vacation or primary residences for many people. The location was perfect, pristine and idyllic. Crystal clear, clean waters, abundant marine life, beautiful sunrises, all made for the perfect island getaway. Change was on its way. On June 1st, the lava can be seen advancing towards the ocean, its final destination. Orders were given to evacuate immediately. On the night of June 3rd, literally overnight, Fisher No. 8 inundated vacation land and Kapoho beach lots. Lava consumed all in its path, destroying those once beautiful properties and filling Kapoho Bay with fresh new lava. What was here a mere 12 hours ago is now completely gone. 24 fissures opened up since May the 3rd, but none more active than Fisher No. 8. The U.S. Geological Survey says Fisher No. 8 alone was spewing 26,000 gallons of lava per second. As of June 25th, a total 30 billion gallons of lava have erupted from Kilauea, just over 6,000 acres covered by the flow, 637 homes destroyed, 28 farmers lost their agricultural crops, 112 million cubic meters of lava has poured out of 24 fissures, 260 acres of new land has been created, and the new coastline is approximately 1.5 miles in length. That was back on June 25th, and this is fissure number eight today. 
All is now quiet in the Lower East Rift Zone. An unmanned aircraft overflight the Fisher 8 shows no eruptive activity. The cinder cone is now quiet. Minor amounts of gases, primarily steam, rise from the north wall of the cinder cone and from areas along the Lower East Rift Zone. The interior walls of Fisher 8 are now slumping downward and inward. The cone itself is about 164 feet high. Clearly visible is the channel canal in which molten lava once flowed. During the active eruption activity, the entire Hawaii Volcanoes National Park was closed for safety reasons. Slowly, incrementally, the park is now reopening. You're now able to visit Kilauea Visitor Center, Crater Rim Drive up to KMC Kilauea Military Camp, Kilauea Iki Overlook and its parking lot, Sulphur Banks Trail, Devastation Trail as well, Remaining closed is the Thurston Lava Tube, again due to safety reasons, and Jagger Museum closed as well. Before traveling into our Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, please contact them for the latest information. We're Big Island Television. Stay with us. A tour of the southern end of the island is coming up.